Okay, hello everybody. We're live. My hair is. Maybe I'm gonna need, need a haircut. Anyway, hope everybody's doing well. It's the 26th of September. Uh, it's raining cats and dogs. I hope everybody. I guess we can't complain in Baltimore. I hope everybody in Florida is safe. I know that um, there's going to be quite a storm coming up. Uh, that Hurricane Helene is coming up in the next few days, so that's going to be somewhat problematic. But uh, hopefully, it won't be as bad as they may sound on the radio but hurricanes are always kind of problematic it always makes me wonder how people live in Florida where this happens a number of times during the year so we're working on a bunch of stuff we're working on a lot of AI stuff I just recorded four new lectures but they won't be out till February I kind of wondered if I should move them up because you know something state-of-the-art today in five months it's like ancient history particularly uh, something like AI nevertheless Today we have ovarian cancer, and just the reason we picked this is because Lily made the point that this is an ovarian cancer month, September that is, and we're leaving the month. It's the fifth leading cause of cancer deaths in women in the United States. There's um, a number of variants of ovarian cancer from germ cell tumors to low malignant potential tumors to those that are high malignant potential with carcinomatosis. Uh, challenge with ovarian cancer always is people have tried to do screening. There's really no good screening that works, right? Um, you know, looking at ovarian lesions with CT, ultrasound, MR has not been helpful as a screening type process. And we know that even like on CT, we see cystic lesions. We can look for nodularity or uh, other abnormalities, but it's not a good screening study. And similarly, using ultrasound or MR has not been successful as well. One of the challenges because of the lack of screening has been that ovarian cancer, when it presents, is often at a, a, a high stage of disease. Five-year survival is roughly 50%. Um, some of the quotes from the SEER data, 1.1% of women will be diagnosed with ovarian cancer at some point in their lifetimes approximately 19,680 women in the U.S. will receive a diagnosis of ovarian cancer in 2024, and approximately 12,740 uh, women will die from the disease. So uh, it's in the top 10. Again, um, a lot of work going on trying to figure out how we could screen potentially. There is some uh, involvement with family history and certain gene mutations including BRCA1 and BRCA2. Other potential risk factors seem to be obesity, endometriosis, and this is something that's been always debated, the use of hormone replacement therapy. So it's always going to be somewhat challenging. There's a lot of work going on trying to figure out if things like liquid, liquid biopsies can be done to pick up uh, ovarian cancer early. Is there some very non-invasive way of doing it? You're not gonna do laparoscopic uh, evaluation of patients, obviously, uh, as a screening mode, so that's not gonna work. So basically, you need to figure out, is it a blood test that'll work? Is it something in that mode? Uh, people have looked at PET scanning, not very helpful. Now, in terms of CT, we do a lot of CT in ovarian cancer mainly in terms of staging disease, right? So when we talk about staging disease, what are you looking for? We're well, looking for an ovarian mass. Can be cystic, can be solid, can be cystic with nodularity, can range from a centimeter to 20 centimeters, often the very large coming out of the pelvis. We look for spread. Ovarian cancer gives that pattern of carcinomatosis with implants on the omentum, mesentery. We get metastasis to the stomach, you have sort of this encasement pattern. The pattern of pseudomyxoma peritonei is one of the things we see with ovarian cancer and other cancers. Um, ovarian, the ovaries can be involved as metastatic disease. We talk about Krukenberg tumors. They're due to a number of things, most commonly gastric cancer, metastasizing to the ovary. Again, um, most of the patients when they do present uh, will have some sort of spread of disease, more than half the patients 
Remember with ovarian cancer, sometimes we pick it up incidentally, only in the sense that if we get a CT, let's say a trauma patient, or vague abdominal pain, and you see an ovarian lesion, and there's a whole pattern of how you work up ovarian lesions. When do you follow them? When do you do ultrasound? Um, and when do you do laparoscopic evaluation? And it's in that planning stage of how to do that and what do you consider an incidental finding of concern? Because we do lots of CT, of course, and we do see ovarian lesions. We often describe them, we describe the size. We tend to get more worried over four centimeters, but you can have small tumors, particularly early in the one centimeter, two centimeter range. What do you do with those? When do you follow them? There's been a lot of discussion and interest in that. Uh, so a lot of the work still needs to be done. There are no perfect answers. In terms of CT scan, usually it's a single phase acquisition. Ideally, positive oral contrast works well, particularly when you're looking at implants involving small bowel and mesentery and omentum. Though um, omentum and mesentery you can see well without oral contrast. IV is critical. You'll often see the nodularity in the ovarian masses. You'll see the implants on the liver surface, on the omentum, on the mesentery better than you would do without any IV contrast material. There are a whole bunch of different chemotherapies that are being developed or have been developed for ovarian cancer. So I think survival is getting better, but it's still, as we mentioned, problematic with a, only a 50, 51% survival rate. So that becomes very important for us to kind of, um, you know, try to be accurate on the staging and then basically I'll look very carefully at what else it is we can see in terms of ovarian cancer. Um, as I mentioned, there's lots and lots of work going on trying to look for markers. I haven't seen anything um, really uh, new that's come out that will take us into that area. You can read a lot of stuff on uh, from the NIH about this. There's also some good uh, stuff about uh, online at different organizations, uh, including the uh, American College of Radiology, including the uh, AACR, the Oncology Societies. And again, um, it's an important diagnosis. And again, focus on early detection, but we're not there yet. So for imaging, follow-up, looking for implants, uh, which can be subtle on the surface of the liver or spleen or bowel. We're looking for possible obstruction because of carcinomatosis. We're looking at the primary lesions in the pelvis. And we try to make certain we don't miss ovarian cancer early because the survival will definitely depend upon that. So I think we'll stop there. Again, um, a lot of the genetics, the idea of BRCA, one and two, positivity, we talk about that with ovarian cancer, breast cancer, and pancreatic cancer amongst others. So there is a lot of work going on in that area. So hopefully we'll have some better news a year from now when September 2025 comes around. And with that, I thank everybody for their attention and have a great day.